um, and obviously this is a summary, but rights an employer must always give themselves in the employment contract. So the right to change the employee's position, the right to change location. Obviously these all have to be exercised carefully. Like you can't send somebody from Sydney to um, Dubbo tomorrow. Well, but the right you should, right, you should have it in there. The right to terminate the contract for any reason. Um, the right to terminate summarily for misconduct or willful breach of contract. And that is, the willful breach of contract just expands it a little bit beyond the, um, I suppose, common law definition of misconduct. Um, it's important to have that in your contract. I will just note, and this is you know, getting to a level of complexity, but if you, um, it is possible when you give yourself that right that sometimes you fit what is what you're entitled to terminate for um, summary dismissal under the Fair Work Act will be narrower than what you have in the contract. So if you do that, you've just got to make sure that you comply with the Fair Work minimum terms, um, minimum periods of notice. A quick question. Yep. How do you show willfulness for the contract? Um, it's, it is quite difficult to show willfulness depending upon the conduct. But one of the times that that clause helps you compared to just um, misconduct is when you've actually, of yourself, said to them, you must now do this in writing and they refuse to do it. So it opens up the capacity. The reason I like to have that willful breach of contract, not just summary um, dis or misconduct in terms of the common law definition, is it opens up the capacity when you're having a fight, particularly with a very senior person who says, no, I'm not doing this, mm -hmm. say so you will do this or you are breaching your contract, do it now. Um, but willful is very difficult mm. to actually prove. Um, another alternative that you can have, and most contracts will have something like this, is repeated breaches of contract. Mm. Under the Fair Work Act, in your minimum notice, which depending on the age and length of service of the employee can be five weeks, repeated breach of contract will not entitle you to dismiss summarily. Um, so you'd still have to pay the five weeks. But for example, if you had a senior executive who repeatedly breached their contract or willfully breached their contract, and they had a three month termination provision, you could terminate them, their contract, um, and then have repudiated it instantly, but you'd still have to pay them the five weeks because you have given yourself a power under the contract which is um, uh, broader than the narrow summary uh, Miss summary dismissal powers under the Fair Work Act. Protection of confidential information. Um, you want to expand as far as lawful your rights in relation to confidential information, but your confidential, confidential information undertakings, sign-offs when, sign when you leave employment, um, your policies around that have a very important educative value as well just in terms of preventing issues becoming an issue. As Lucien mentioned, we'll often see people who are really surprised by what belongs to the employer and what belongs to the employee. In terms of the employee, nothing belongs to the employee. <laughs> but they're really quite startled by that. Um, and whilst you want to always you know, try and run a reasonable workplace, confidential information, know-how business plans are so critical. And as Jo said, it's so hard to get back if they, you know, uh, you can get them back, it's incredibly expensive with the, the type of orders that you need to have. Um, you're much better to just have people understand what confidential information is and to respect it at all times. The all up set off clause, absolutely essential. As Lucien mentioned, this is the clause that says what you receive in remuneration is, to the extent permitted by law, a payment for everything. Now, that doesn't mean you can pay less in total for a pay period than an employee would get under an award, etc. But if you don't have it, you could have someone on a hundred grand who is covered by the clerk's award turning around and claiming over time. So it is absolutely essential. Right to change policies and give reasonable directions. We've talked about that. Um, separate D regarding post-termination obligations. Now, as Lucien said, the post-termination restraints could be the subject of a whole um, seminar itself, so we can't get into it too much, but just an extra point I wanted to make is always consider having your post-termination restraints, if it's really important, key people, not for everyone, but in a separate deed. The reason for that is that if you breach the contract of employment, 
which as we say, we're not perfect and we all do from time to time, and there have been a number of cases on this, you can then find yourself up against an argument and a finding that the post-termination restraints do not apply because you breached and repudiated the contract of employment. If you have a separate deed signed at the same time in relation to confidential information and post-termination restraints, that deed remains in force regardless of what you do. Again, I'm not advocating people go out and treat employees terribly and breach contracts, it's just it does happen. Mm. And that just gives you protection in relation to your proprietal information, which is the key to a business. So, things that must not be in an employment contract, agreements to agree on any issue. As I say, that absolutely a no-no. Incorporation of any workplace policy, incorporation of legislation at a particular date. So, people will sometimes put in, think that it's like a good idea to kind of put the award or um, legislation in the contract of employment. Really bad idea, because that just means that if the legislation change, be governed by both. So which, whatever is more favourable to the employee. So you better to just say something like um, your, your annual leave entitlements up for the Fair Work Act and then having the definitions clause that any act that replaces that is the Fair Work Act. Aspirational statements, we've <laughs> talked enough about that. Performance management process is never in a contract of employment because in my um, Experience, although people comply with them about 85% of the time, that 15% of the people that end up being the ones that you're in court with. Um, and if you never have a general statement about incentive schemes, either have it in um, or, or have it like any incentive scheme is discretionary or either we review it. If you don't have a general, we'll come up with one with 40% available when we have time. Okay. Well, feel free to come up and ask us any questions or. Thanks very much Thank for coming. You. Thank you. Thank you.